Okay, welcome to this flipped assignment of stoichiometry. Okay, a couple, couple tips while doing this. First of all, I'm going to be talking pretty fast, so it would be a really good idea. You can stop this at any point to take notes. Second, make sure you take notes on a separate paper that you'll bring to class. And then on another piece of paper, you want to solve and complete the question at the end of this assignment that you'll actually turn for credit as soon as you walk in the door. Also, uh, just to help you out, this is a Google document that I've shared with anybody in my class, so it should be in your Google Drive. So really, first of all, let's start talking about what exactly is stoichiometry. Um, imagine Thanksgiving dinner, right? And if you're going to plan a Thanksgiving dinner, you want to have rolls, stuffing, and a turkey uh, enough to feed, let's say, a family of five. All of a sudden, you get a call from Aunt Edna and Uncle George, and they're going to bring all their kids. So you're going to have to plan accordingly. You run out to the store, you get more stuffing, you get more turkeys, you get more uh, rolls, and eventually that'll make twice the number of food. You'll get to feed twice the number of people. Uh, the nice thing about stoichiometry is it's really just the same thing. It's just that we're going to use chemicals instead of food. And as it would turn out, the balanced equation is sort of what we would get from the cookbook if we were making a turkey. But the balanced equation is the key to knowing uh, how much we're starting with and how much we're going to end up with. The next thing we need to do is to convert this idea of um, moles to grams and grams to moles. So you've got to have a periodic table. And then finally, the most important thing, or else you won't get credit when you do this, you've got to have dimensional analysis. You have to show your work. You need to know where things come from and where things go to. So you're going to need the balanced equation for mole to mole ratios and the periodic table with anything that goes from moles to grams or grams to moles. So let's go ahead and get started, and let's do a problem. Let's imagine, for instance, uh, water. Okay, we balanced equation, H2 plus O2 goes to 2H2O. We have the balanced equation. Let's start off with something pretty easy, moles. Now, the cool thing about this balanced equation is the coefficients not only tell us the number of molecules in the reactants to make up two water molecules in the products, but the two to one to two is the mole ratio. So whenever we're going mole to mole and only mole to mole, will we use the balanced equation? So here's a simple example. I know the bottom one got cut off, but let's say we have four moles of, of H2 and we want to figure out how much water we end up getting. Simple idea. You can see here that here's what we're starting with. They give us this in the problem. The balanced equation says for two moles of H2 we get two moles of water. Notice the H2 and the H2 cancel out. We're left with two moles of H2O. We wind up with four, four moles of H2. Now I know this is cut off in the bottom. Just imagine we had two moles of O2. Okay, you use a two to one ratio and I know it's cut off a little bit. It would cancel out to give me four moles of H2O. Simple idea. Uh, and that's what we do for multiple problems. Now, let's suppose we were to get a little more complex. It turns out that it's rare that we, you know, just use moles. Typically, we would like to use grams. In this case, we have to use the periodic table. And again, the key here, you start with the balanced equation. Uh, you look at what they give us. And let's just focus, for instance, there's two parts this, but, let, but, but let's just take a look at this part. The grams, let's say they start off with this many grams of the um, of, of sodium 34.5. Uh, we're trying to figure out how many grams do we get of NaCl. Okay, so the way it's set up, step number one, balanced equation. Step number two, convert grams to moles using the periodic table, not the balanced equation. So we got 34.5 grams of sodium. This one mole to one to the 23 grams of sodium come right from the periodic table we end up with 1.5 moles of sodium. How do I go moles of sodium to moles of sodium chloride? You gotta use the balanced equation. Okay, so for instance, here's the first part again, grams to moles. I don't use the balanced equation in this part. I have 1.5 moles of sodium. Notice what happens. I look at my balanced equation. There's two moles of sodium for every two moles of NaCl. That comes from the balanced equation, moles and moles cancel. We're left with moles of NaCl. Once I have moles of NaCl, I want to get to grams of NaCl. Again, I go back to the periodic table. Big mistake that people often make is they want to say, well, because we're getting two moles here, let's multiply this times two. Look, we've already used the coefficients. We're just saying one mole per 58.5 grams of NaCl. 
moles and moles cancel, we're left with grams of NaCl. And that's how we get grams to gram problem. Um, a nice little summary is this graphic. This tends to work out really well. Whenever you're given a mass, first just convert it to moles using the periodic table. Okay, that's this step right here. Moles to moles, use the balance equation. And then once you're done with this coefficient, you tuck them away and never use them again. Once you have your moles of your unknown, of what you're trying to get to, again, go back to the periodic table and get to mass of unknown. Okay, so here's an, another example that's a little more this nice mass to mass problem. So go ahead and stop it and see if you can try it. It says, how many grams of barium sulfate is made when we got 42 grams of the iron 3 sulfate? Here's the balanced reaction. Uh, notice we've got a balanced reaction. The key is they're telling us we're starting with 42 grams of whatever I'm starting with here, and this is my unknown that I'm trying to get to. The way they set this up, again, first just convert grams to moles. That's what they do in this. This comes right from the periodic table. Step number two, they use the balance equation again. Moles of Fe2SO4 um, taken three times, that's canceled. We know there's a one to three ratio. That comes right from the balance equation. And then last step, take moles of barium sulfate and get to grams of barium sulfate, and that's it. So what I'd like you to do now is, again, you only want to use the mole to mole ratio. Uh, one time in the balance equation. Last but not least, here we go. See if you can solve this problem and bring it to class. Hey, I'm going to give you a couple tips. We've got nitric acid, more than enough nitric acid, and we're going to dump in some copper. It's going to react. And we'll get this nasty gas, right? So how many grams of nitric acid are needed to dissolve 11.45, or it should say to react with 11.45 grams of copper? Okay, so step number one, right? Hey, we've got the balance equation. That's key. Step number two, notice, get grams and convert this to moles of copper. Then we go, hey, moles of copper, moles to of nitric acid. So they want to say, how much do we need? This is a three mole to eight mole ratio. So they're like, how much do we have to have, you know, to make this thing happen? And then finally, uh, the last part is, we can say, um, let's see, what would grams be of nitric acid? Typically, we'll convert that to molarity, but that's really another flipped assignment. But the idea is, see if you can come up with the number of grams. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. And don't forget, if you want to have notes, you can play this again, stop anytime. Make sure you bring this problem to class. Thank you. And that ends this flipped assignment.